I want to talk today about a recent appraisal action from the Delaware Court of Chancery entitled In Re Appraisal of Orchard Enterprises. This is a July 18, 2012 decision by Chancellor Strine dealing with the appraisal and fair value of the company's stock. In this particular case, the uh, common stockholders were cashed out for $2.05 per share and they filed an action relying on the uh, discounted cash flow analysis arguing that their fair value of their stock was $5.42 per share. Uh, the defendants in response, the company in response said uh, not only was the the fair value of it is actually less than the uh, the two dollars and five cents that they were offered and the fair value is really a dollar and fifty three cents which sort of to me is a little bit of a throwback to the just care decision from April 2012 where the court found that the uh, fair value of the company was actually six million dollars less than the amount the company used for appraisal. Um, after a trial in the case the, uh, by, the Chancellor Strine found that the fair value was four dollars and sixty seven cents uh, and that was what was awarded and uh, plus interest. But there was interesting disparity among the experts in the case and it had to do with the valuation of the preferred, shot, the preferred shareholders uh, liquidation preference which had a $25 million liquidation preference. And the preference was uh, held by the preferred stockholders uh, and Orchard preferred stockholder which held, was held almost preferred stock was held almost entirely by Dimensional which actually initiated the going private merger. So the court had to decide whether the preferred stock should be valued at the $25 million liquidation preference or on an as converted basis in determining the value to subtract from Orchard's enterprise value to derive the, the uh, fair value for the common stock. Uh, now in this case the preferred stock in the certificate of designation uh, Orchard argued that the preferred stock required the payment of the $25 million liquidation preference because in the language of the certificate of, of designation it said the payment should be made upon a dissolution of the company, a sale of all or substantially all of Orchard's assets leading to a liquidation of the company or a sale of control of Orchard. Now while Orchard conceded that even though the liquidation preference didn't trigger uh, wasn't triggered by the merger, the liquidation preference still should be deducted from the enterprise value. However, the court disagreed and found that the liquidation preference was not the subject of a contract right at a certain date, but rather was only triggered by unpredictable events such as a, d a dissolution or a liquidation. And the court went on to discuss a settled Delaware law that petitioners should receive their pro rata share of the value of Orchard as a, as a going concern citing the Cavalier Ore Corporation versus Hartnett case. Uh, the, the proper way to value the, the preferred share, the court noted, was to value Orchard as a going concern and to allocate value to the preferred and common stock based on the allocations made in the certificate of designations. designation. The uh, court stated that such an approach marries perfectly with the DCF method of valuation which is based on the notion that a corporation's value equals the present value of its future cash flows. Chancellor Strine also discussed uh, a similar situation from a case back in January of 2012, Shifton versus Morgan Joseph Holdings. Uh, but in that case the result was different because there the company had what the court called a firm legal obligation to pay a liquidation preference six months from the valuation date. So in that case the court found that the going concern of the company had to take into account the contractual right at a specific time for the liquidation preference. So what are the takeaways? Um, dealing with preferred stock, it's really contract driven. So you have to look at how specific the language uh, in, in the certificate of designation and, and in particular the circumstances regarding the payment. If the language shows that the liquidation preference is just a priority, sort of non-specific -spec non speculative amount, then the value is going to be as a going concern uh, on an as converted basis. And you don't, and if you then go to find that it's a contract right, the language is specific enough that it's a contract right for a certain date and the value as stated in a certificate of designation, you would take that amount and deduct it from the enterprise value before the common shareholders are allocated their pro rata share.